All right, we are live. Um, hey everyone, welcome and thank you so much for attending this session. We, um, I'm Utsav Shah, I'm the co-founder of Career Nub. It is a platform which helps early stage professionals with their mentorship and helps them advance in their career trajectory. Um, today in this episode, we have with us Priyanchi Gupta. She's a dear friend and um, we did our undergrad together in Delhi University and she's had tremendous experience in product management and she's currently working with a leading tech firm named Datadog in New York. Um, so welcome Priyanshi and thank you so much for taking out the time to do this. Um, if you want to quickly introduce yourself, that would be great. Yeah, hello, thanks for introducing me. Uh, so basically I'm working with Datadog that's uh, located in New York. I work as a product manager here for last uh, three years or so. Um, I work with the digital experience team in Datadog where we are building uh, uh, applications, SaaS applications to monitor mobile user applications. So if you have any issues in your mobile application and you want a tool to understand what's going on there, there's a team behind that and there's a product manager behind that and then that's me. Prior to Datadog, I have been working as a software developer for the uh, past three years or so again. And I worked with multiple startups actually. Uh, one of them actually failed and two of them succeeded. So I've had like a myriad of experience in that regard. Uh, to transition from engineering to uh, product management, I pursued a course in engineering management from Carnegie Mellon University, Pittsburgh. And it gave me the exposure to basically understand some of the skill sets that I was missing at the point as an engineer, uh, which I would love to talk about. But uh, generally, yeah, I mean, we did our uh, undergrad together, Otsav and I from uh, Delhi University and really glad to be here, guys. All right, yeah, thanks. Thank you so much for the introduction. So quickly, just give us a general sense of what product management is, because I think there's a basic a misunderstanding of what a what product management is in general and what does a product manager do actually in a company yeah yeah for sure so what product management is if you have to like think in very simple terms think of being like a customer inside a company so you are as a product manager a customer's voice inside the company anything that's going wrong anything you want to implement any like you need to orchestrate the success of the product from scratch to the final launch and further iterations and marketing. All of that is your job. And uh, you do that by keeping customer in your mind or rather staying in the customer's mind. So, I, I mean, as uh, an engineer myself, uh, as I said, I was working with startups. Even I had a lot of confusion on what product management is. Is this something I should pursue or not? And what are the skill set that you need to get there? So I'm actually like, reading about it and like experiencing it, I have come to realize that although it's a very difficult job to define, uh, but you can categorize the skills that you need or the work that you're doing in four primary categories. And you'll see examples of uh, successful leaders doing that all over the globe. For instance, like to start with vision, strategy, design, and execution. These are the four main pillars that drive product management. So you need to have a vision, a vision and this in the sense, a dream that you can sell to your customers, to your team. You both, you need to motivate your team all the time to understand, to make them understand what you're working on, why that is important and why they should spend their time and energy on doing that. Similarly, the same thing you have to spend with your customers in trying to make them understand what your dream is, what you're building and why that is going to be useful for you. So it's often said, like, before even the product is ready, how you're able to sell the product, like as a mock-up, that's a skill set that's great to have as a product manager. And uh, uh, you might, like, even think of Elon Musk as an example. Like, even if the product is not ready, you see him, like, going in and, like, just go back and look at a 2013 video of him. I'll actually share the link of that, uh, demonstrating what SpaceX could look like. And we all know how we've all around the globe been attached to that vision. So that's like a primary example of how do you drive people to that vision and you how do you steer people in the same direction that you're thinking. Uh, secondly, then we have a strategy. So just having the vision is not important. It's also important how you strategize that vision. So with strategy, you need to like understand who your target audience is going to be, finding that product market fit, 
which means uh, is my product meant for this audience or a subset of that audience? And which audience is my product not meant for? Understanding those key questions is very important. And once you do identify your target audience, knowing the problem that you're solving very clearly in your head, you might be able to write books about that, but how are you able to define the problem that you're solving in one line? That's, that's like the key to building a good strategy. Once you have that problem, once you have the target audience, you also need to understand how will you break into that market? Uh, as a product manager, you're basically a mini CEO of your own product. So you're driving the product, as I mentioned, from scratch to the complete completion. And for that, you need to understand uh, what are the value propositions that my product is going to offer? How is it going to be different from others who are already marketing this or like all my competitors? And once even if I have that, how do I monetize that? What is my monetization strategy? What is my acquisition strategy? Like, do I need to build this or buy this? So all those sort of questions as a product manager, you will have to answer. And finally, the key piece of strategies are uh, your KPIs. So if you are going in the right direction, what are my key performance indicators? Am I performing well or am I redirecting? Because it's easy to like define a strategy, but then difficult to like stick around with it. So if you are steering or navigating through that strategy, that's what you're going So we talked about vision, we talked about strategy. Another thing is that once you have both of them, you need to design. You need to design and think about, as I mentioned, how the customer is going to think. You'll see some subtle things like as you're, going through Slack or going through Instagram that, hey, how do they know that I'm looking for this next? Why does Reels have like a vertical component instead of horizontal? So all of these things go into how you're thinking about the design and how you're thinking, how your customer will be thinking. And even like just having this design is not important. You know that you're not the one implementing it. You have to go back and talk to an engineering team who's much more advanced and expert in whatever you're doing. And you have to clarify those uh, design requirements to them. So if you just tell them that, hey, I need a vertical component, I'm sure the Instagram product manager did not do that because it's possible to go in multiple directions with that. You have to classify, you have to be very, very clear on what the requirements actually mean. Uh, how do I navigate? How do the users navigate? What, what problem again you're solving and how are you, why are you solving that problem for the customer? So design is a key piece. And uh, as I mentioned, like, Apple is like, I think one of the best examples that we all hear of since the inception of iPhones or Mac, they have come a long way to keep design as their primary focus and navigating their product success through that design piece. And finally, even if you have vision, strategy, design, you're bound to fail if you don't have this fourth final pillar, which is actually execution. So Having all this is important, but it's okay to have a good idea, a great idea, but still seeing people fail because uh, they just keep that in their head and they're not really, really implementing those things and they're not bound on that success road. So they start doing something, but then they stop doing that. And then like, if you look around, you might not uh, like, like that example, but think about it. And Amazon is probably like, one of the best execution company because they're continuously executing and they're continuously delivering and there's like products and features coming out every day so you have to really hustle your team bring them together as a wolf pack and you know make that make shit happen so execution is i think like one key piece which bounds all these three ideas and ideologies together and uh, once you master all these four i think you're in a great place to be both a product manager and a product leader Wow, that's such a loaded answer. And it, thank you so much for like breaking it down into clear, actionable like pointers. Um, tell me quickly on how has been your experience in working from, so you joined Datadog when it was probably a 400 uh, people team member uh, company. And now I think it's, it's more than 2000 or 3000, whatever that number is. How has your role as a product manager changed from a very small organization kind of problems that you are trying to solve versus how this has scaled so much in the last uh, two to three years? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, with Datadog, although the ideology has always been that uh, you should be able to feed your team with a single pizza. So we always keep teams slow, uh, sorry, smaller in size. And we always try to make sure that everyone's voice is heard. So you don't yeah, ever feel like you're stuck in a huge company with when your voice is not being heard. And uh, having said that, we did see a lot of transition from, as you mentioned, like coming from 400 people to more than 3,500 today. And uh, that was a journey because we went through an IPO, we went through like addition of multiple products. Uh, personally, I was working with another product manager to learn because this was almost my first stint as a product manager when I started off. And I was, I was uh, working with another product manager to learn how to build that tool as a basic uh, and then just like, you know, more integrations to that tool, how to enhance that tool. And one of the key things uh, to learn like when you're just developing a product, when you're just starting off is getting anchor customers or design partners. Uh, so Datadog, if I didn't mention, it's a B2B company. Uh, and with B2B companies, it's very important to build those customer relations, always working together with them. So we did work with ABC, three companies uh, to have them as an anchor customers who we would talk to almost every day, who we will like run through our ideas, who we want to like, you know, question on why is why they want to build that, why they want to get that there. And we decided to build that product really robust and really catered to all their needs so that they could find that strategic differentiation and really love our product. So we did build like champions within uh, the development suite so much so that we didn't even have to convince the financial team, uh, the developers in that company, convince them to pay us a huge chunk of money so that we could build our product. And that's how the journey has always been. Now that I've uh, moved to another product wherein we are again building this new edition from scratch, I am applying those same learnings into this new product as well, wherein we need those design partners. We really need to think from a customer's point of view. And I think uh, somehow, because this product I'm building is uh, for mobile application developers and my, I myself have been a mobile application developer. So those things do come in handy, but I would say that this is not essential. You don't need to always be a developer to transition into product manager. It might make things a little easier though. Got it. Got it. Makes sense. All right. I just want to roll back all the discussion and talk to the Priyanshi who was in college, still fig figuring it out how to break into product management or just decide whether to get into the PM role or not. I think PM is, is one such role where there is no degree. There's no, uh, you can't do a master's in product management as of yet. Um, I don't think there's a degree. So how do you decide on what sort of education path to take? to sort of get your career into the product space or in the, into the PM space. So should people do focus more on the technical piece, as you said, or more on the designing one or go into engineering management as you, as you uh, gone or go into complete strategy, which is probably MBA. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in fact, let's break down your question into two pieces. Like, first of all, like, how do you even figure out if product management is your thing? And then let's see, like, how do you pursue product management? So I'll, I'll tell you, like, uh, back in 2016, I, I was, like, super confused. Where do I want to get? Uh, what do I want to do? And uh, uh, one of the things that helped me figure out if I want to go in this direction is because I was working with, like, startups wherein uh, there was a small team and we were bound to do, like, almost everything. So we were the ones thinking about the strategy of the product. We were the ones presenting that to VCs. And we were the ones who were actually building the product. However, realizing that the coding piece is not like my favorite piece, instead talking about the product or, you know, really understanding or like listening to people on what they are trying to achieve with that product was the key piece. However, there were like still skills that I was missing to get there. Uh, so that's why I decided to pursue something that would get me to product management. Some people might just be born with that skill and they might not need to. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how do you transition without a degree into product management as well. However, I personally decided to make that switch using a master's degree. And uh, if you're looking for like, hey, what are those skills? Like what were the skills that you were missing? Then think about it in two streamlines. First is like, so product management lies in uh, the midst of business and technical piece of your company. And you have to really think about what you're good at versus what you're missing and be very honest with yourself. So if uh, you're really good with like technical pieces, uh, design architecture, prototyping, 
then that's like your strength. Otherwise you get a course in computer science or like whatever engineering degree you have to build those skills. Otherwise, if you are really good at negotiating, uh, at strategizing, at marketing, um, or building like roadmaps or thinking, uh, breaking down a big problem into smaller chunks, then that's your strength. Otherwise, get a degree in either MBA or uh, engineering management, as I mentioned. So really decide what you're missing out on and what are the core pieces that make a product management role work and then, and then like go on pursuing it. Going on to your next question on what my degree did and how did I uh, end up choosing it? So I pursued engineering management, uh, which allowed me to take both courses uh, in technical as well as business courses. So it was like a combined course by Tepper Business School and College of Engineering at CMU. And uh, they offered uh, courses like, as I mentioned, negotiation. So how do you have those customer conversations, but don't let your customer put you down into building everything. Instead, come up with an idea wherein they know, uh, you know what they want, asking them real advice on why they want that. Uh, same thing with the technical side, like getting courses. So I, I was from computer engineering background and I wanted to pursue a course in computer. I wanted to like pursue a role in computer engineering. So I did courses in applied machine learning and uh, uh, like uh, prototyping or like how do you like design UI design uh, sort of courses. So really decide which domain you wanna be in and choose a course that allows you to be flexible in choosing the uh, like actual specializations that you want. And the more flexible you are, the more experience you get. So my course also offered uh, an internship option. So I was able to like get my first stint as an internship in Hypersense, a company based in Pittsburgh and, uh, and really learn the basics of what you do as a product manager. So those things I think are critical to look for in a degree when, when you're pursuing product management. Yeah, I think uh, so probably sort of a SWOT analysis of your own strengths and weaknesses and where you see the yes. opportunities um, that you have before even delving into uh, picking a course or picking a college. Um, great point. So tell us more about your journey into the application sort of process um, into different colleges or courses and, and what sort of colleges were you targeting? What sort of courses were you looking at? Um, I think you already mentioned like why you want to do um, engineering management, but are there any other colleges which offer certain courses that you really liked? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So uh, if you are really looking for uh technical courses and you go for MS in computer science or MS in your specialized degree. If you're looking for uh, more business driven courses then you go for uh, more like MBAs and uh, wherein you can get, you know, all those business skills. I was looking for a combination of both and that's why I went for engineering management. And uh, all of these directions can lead to product management if that is the final goal that you're trying to achieve. If those are the skills that you're really looking to acquire. Uh, for my personal uh, like application process, I was looking for a shorter course, so something that would last only one year so that I don't miss out a lot on my opportunities and roles as I had already worked as a developer and I did not want to like leave industry for long. So I was only applying for spring courses and um, I could find really good courses uh, in Duke, in uh, uh, CMU, in NYU. And in, in fact, there is, uh, I'll, I'll share a link, there's a consortium of these major uh, major uh, colleges wherein they talk just about product management. Product management is like really up and coming field, which even the educational institutions are really targeting to get you clarifications on. In fact, CMU, the year I left, recently launched a course actually specializing in product management. So we do have a MEMIS in product management with CMU now. So uh, I can share a list of courses wherein there's consortium of engineering management and product management people are and like, they do have common seminars and uh, meetups wherein you can talk a lot about like product management generally, uh, mm -hmm. but you decide based on what you're looking for from that course. Sure. Um, no, that's a, that's a great point. So quick question or probably a sidetrack on that is, let's say if people don't have the time or either the resources in terms of finances or whatnot to invest in a engineering management or an MS or an MBA degree, what are the other parts? Um, so you already joined a startup, you had exposure to probably building products or whatnot. Um, I've heard a lot of people switching roles within the company or attending boot camps or whatnot. So do you, do you have any experience or any, any advice on that part? Yeah, 
I mean, like uh, once you're clear that product management is what you really want to do, then definitely decide, as you as you also mentioned, a SWOT analysis of your strengths and skills, and then decide which path you want to take. It's not always necessary to do a degree to get into product management. An internal switch can also work. And the reason is that you're already so close to a product inside a company that you know the nitty gritties, you know the customer you're talking to. Sometimes your role also allows you to get the customer exposure that you need. And uh, almost all companies are welcoming to get internal people into product management only because they don't have to train so much and product management, as I mentioned, is still up and coming. So there's not a lot of candidates in market uh, who really know that scale and that product inside out already. So an internal switch is always possible. Although to work in that direction, and a lot of my friends have done that, is uh, by really like talking to people. So networking becomes really important, wherein you both know like uh, the engineering side as well as the business side of things. So whichever team you're interested in, whichever product you're interested in, think of ideas, talk to people, share those ideas and uh, attend uh, like customer calls. Even if you're shadowing a call, uh, attend that and talk to people. Hey, this is what I'm doing. How are you achieving that? Try to break the, try to understand what are like the bigger problems of that product. What is like the direction of that product? Where is it headed in like the next six months, next one year, next five years? And how do you, how would you break down those problems into smaller pieces? And uh, once you have that, of course, like talk to your director of product management or whoever you want to report to, uh, share those ideas. It's never enough. Like as a product manager, you have to talk a lot. So it's better to start building those skills already. And uh, getting that customer exposure, if, if you're not getting that today is essential. So go out and talk. This is like my key skill here. Amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, other than that, like you also mentioned, joining a startup generally is also helpful because uh, as a startup, you have to do a lot of things. So if you are working with a scale problem in a bigger company, either find a team that's smaller or make a switch to a startup wherein you are already doing all of these things and it's easier to further get into product management. Sorry, go ahead. Got it, great. Um, cool, so just walk us quickly on your journey from graduating from CMU and getting or, or uh, cracking into the first APM or the PM role that you got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I, I got into product management right after my undergrad and uh, the skill set that I needed basically was uh, because Datadog is a very technically driven company. We did not used to have product managers at all. Engineers were making all the decision. And that is because uh, we're building a product for developers by developers. So where do you need that product management piece? Where does that fit in? And in fact, the time at which I joined was when we were deciding if we need product managers or not. And one of the skills that uh, usually recruiters and hiring managers are looking for is uh, people who can actually take initiatives, people mm -hmm. who are born with that like leadership quality. So if you see a problem, you try to take an initiative to solve that problem. You make, you understand the impact of that problem. Is that problem important enough? Can you motivate people to solve that problem? Do you see the impact of that problem in a long term? And how do you design, like how is that in problem impacting your customers? So those skills, like taking initiative and really understanding these key pieces about the problem. And then again, talking to a lot of people who are impacted by that problem. Mm -hmm. is the skill set that we are basically looking to uh, hire. And uh, with CMU, uh, we did a lot of courses in both strategies uh, where we could learn like the MBA pieces on, hey, what are the five forces to enter mm -hmm. a business market? Or how do you strategize? Where, when do you build versus buy? So all those case studies were really important. We also did a course on marketing, like really understanding your target audience, your product market fit, what is your hypothesis and how do you validate that with the customer? And how do you again end up selling your product? Those th key skills are important and uh, these are the ones I learned at CMU. So those combined with my earlier skills of developer, being a developer myself and uh, my like, you know, real goal of getting into product management is actually, I think got me here. And uh, it's not that tough, you know, it's, important to always be listening and if you have that skill set and if you really dream to get into product management then really think about uh, the skills you're missing and the course that you want to do about that and, and you'll get there amazing um thanks for that so 
tell us a bit about so let's say if uh, people do engineering or the course that you were in um they figure out that product management is something which is extremely difficult to crack they're not able to get jobs in that or they, they're just not interested in doing pming right um what sort of other avenues open up after doing a course like engineering management or um, or or courses like yeah yeah so basically with the course like engineering management or mba you are acquiring the business skills like if you're doing mba after a technical exposure then you're acquiring the business side of skill things and product management is not the only avenue where you want to, where you need to get into uh, there are more options like consulting so with consulting, you're basically doing the same kind of product management job, but for a specific client, for a specific service, and you're providing guidance on how to solve or how to navigate those through those specific problems. And a lot of people uh, from our courses went into consulting. Some actually also went back into a uh, software engineer and uh, engineering because knowing the business side of things or knowing how much money your product is going to make never hurts even an engineer. And it just motivates them to do their job better and uh, if they are not interested in product management software engineering is always good consulting is always good or you might just end up starting your own company because uh, you already know the nitty gritties of what goes on and you have exposure to all the pieces that put a company together so we did see a lot of people getting into entrepreneurship as well got it great um talk us you you talked about a lot of um skill set like what skills a pm should have could you probably drill down or deep dive uh, a bit on exactly what are the key skills to absolutely have uh, for product management and probably also speak um, a bit about how a role of product manager is different in a SaaS based company, which is probably yours versus the rest, probably consumer internet or healthcare or whatnot. Yeah, for sure. So uh, to begin with, like the skills that you require, as I mentioned again and again, is like listening is important, listening and understanding because you are ultimately a customer's voice inside the company. And uh, to have them heard, you need to listen to them properly and asking the right questions. Another skill that I did not mention, but is super important is making decisions. Uh, as a product manager, you'll have to make a lot of decisions, smaller or bigger, and uh, you have to make those decisions on the go. Uh, they are, you're being hired as a company product manager or like you're, you're leading that product success only by because you're making the right decisions and you're deciding to do no or to say no to a lot of things. If you end up like building everything or if you end up building every cool thing, then uh, you end up nowhere. So those decisions are always key and it's important to keep them in mind when you're making. Mm -hmm. uh, networking is important. You need to be a social person. You need to Ha be able to talk to people about their problems and you need to like meet the right sort of people inside a company to sell your product taking initiative leadership is a key skill because if you see a problem and don't do anything about it then you're not solving that problem it's it's going to keep sitting there and your execution skill your execution pillar is missing um, another thing that becomes handy is staying organized so as a pm you'll have so many emails i, I wake up to 500 emails every day and having a skill as basic as email management is going to take you a long way more than you can imagine. And again, because uh, you have a context or you're like a jack of all trades inside the company, you're the one with like the most knowledge, even if you don't have in-depth knowledge, uh, you will be the one who needs, who hears from everyone and having a to-do list is always very handy. So the to-do list of what is important, what's not important, what, what context is coming from where, unless you, are a super brainy and, and you can remember everything, then kudos, but otherwise write it on paper. Uh, keep that in mind, maintain a whiteboard. It helps you brainstorm and it helps you stay organized. Um, I, I'll definitely like share some of the case studies and some of the readings that I have uh, uh, learned over time, reading from PMs at Google, PMs at Slack and their story. And I'll definitely share those links for everyone who finds them useful. Uh, those are the ones that will, that will get you there. To get to your second question, uh, what is the difference between a B2B SaaS company versus a, let's say, B2C product company? So mm -hmm. if you really think about it, uh, B2B is talking to, just selling the product to 500 customers and boom, you're there. Mm -hmm. uh, you can sell to more, but the, the, like, the audience will not ever be like in the millions or billions of users, which is typically mm -hmm. uh, 
possible with B2C companies. And more so as a SaaS provider, you are providing a service, you're selling a product wherein they'll buy once and they'll have a contract for one year. So the main key negotiations and the main key product driven decisions happen at the start of the product wherein you're actually building that feature for the company. And then you might have more iterations as you sell the product to more and more people. So those customer driven metrics and the customer driven product development become essential because uh, you're deciding what sort of product this is and how do you build the features that really cater to your customer. So I'll be going on like three different calls with three different customers almost every day just to understand what they need. That's not the same case as a B2C company. Instagram cannot call us all and like ask us where we are going, what we're doing, what we like or not. They might have NPS. They might have like a, a star system where you rate how much you like the product versus not, but that's only to a very like high level. So to get into B2C understanding of the customer, you need to replay the idea of how the product is doing or how the customer is using your product. You need to be really looking at trends. You need to be a person who has a good like data analysis and data understanding expertise built in within them. So you can find those patterns, you can find uh, where the user is, you know, going and what they're trying to achieve or predict uh, a user action. So those are like the key differentiator, which really changes the type of skill set that would be essential in both sort of companies. Uh, like when you're marketing your product as a B2B company, you are launching that product in probably an event or a conference. Whereas as a B2C company, uh, you are launching that product on ad spaces. You're reaching out to more and more audiences. So the way you market your product, the way you think about your product, the way you understand data is going to be different for both of them. I, I hope that answers the question. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That definitely answers the question. Um, last question, I think, before we break in into the audience questions. So being a data scientist myself, a bit biased to ask this question, which is, how important has been with the amount of uh, boom in, in kind of the data and, and big data, how important has it become for a product management to be on top of numbers or on top of data analytics and how does data help uh, solve some of the problems within the product space? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, you cannot ever underestimate the importance of data that goes into, you know, build this entire system. So you have this machine and data is the one that is pushing that machine. It's just a little different how how you are you know getting that data. You might be getting that data as I mentioned through trends and analysis, but even in a B two C company, you cannot undermine the importance of actually going and talking to a customer. So you will need to have that skill set wherein you both on on both pieces like you're getting that input stream, understanding that data, how that's impacting your customer, and then presenting that to your exec leadership, making sure they align with your vision and they are uh, like, you know, motivated to do what you're doing and you are still like building your product to success. So both those streams of data of like getting that and presenting that is important. But what is also important, like as an added skill for a product manager is actually going and talking to the, both those customers and both your execs and trying to convince them with the idea. Uh, Data analysis uh, especially becomes important when you are trying to solve a problem wherein the customer doesn't know really what a problem is. Your customer might be asking you to build a shoe, build a shoe, build a shoe, but you might, they might all they need is basically a floor mat. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you don't know, your customer doesn't really know what they need until you tell them or you give them the product. It's not just important to have, hey, I hear, the customer and hey, I deliver. It's also important to have hey, I hear the customer. Hey, I analyze the complete data. Hey, I understand what the customer is trying to do and then deliver. So missing those key pieces is where data comes in and is important to make sure your decisions are aligned with what the customer is really looking for. All right, thank you so much. Um, let's let's get the audience question in. Um, I think we already have a couple of questions. Uh, Stuti, do you want to just ask your question? Sure, I have a couple of questions. Should I start with the one on the chat or just go with the flow? Thank okay, uh, uh, cool. Uh, so the first question, when I was talking to a couple of people as well as my manager uh, was, what is the difference between the skits, uh, skill set of a product manager versus a program manager? 
and you know uh, because i have heard a lot that if you are a more technical person you should go into a program management rather than product management because product management as i said is more you know vision strategy more of mba coming into a picture rather than technical skills uh they just have to uh, go with the engineering team and let the program manager take the implementation side of it so you know there's always this debate in my head so what are your mm-hmm. thoughts and yeah for sure i i face the same debate and i have come to realize that uh, it's always about like what you really need you know uh what is the kind of role or you want to picture yourself doing um, and a lot of companies define program management and product management as different uh, while like suppose like microsoft has just the concept of program manager they do not have product management uh, and they make the program managers do the same thing so i'd say don't get uh, misled by terminologies first of all like really talk to the recruiting manager or your team or a person who's actually at program management and product management job on what they're doing industry wide the way those are defined is that product manager you're working with a specific product uh, you have an actual absolute product which you are delivering to your customer whereas as a program manager you're working with the with a service which is more like you work with the client make sure that their needs are met and that is when more like technical issues or if there's some some fire you're the one extinguishing it you're the one making sure uh, deciding those things don't happen in the future making sure that the service is always running up and close so you're right uh program management is more close to technical side but do not be restricted by what you already have be always open to the new skills that you can add by courses or boot camps or just like you know general exposure by talking to those people who are in those teams so that you find yourself where you picture yourself belonging does that answer your question yeah i got the sense uh, of uh, the whole thing uh then um as you mentioned about data analysis how important would it be to you know uh, get you know up to date in data analytics skills or da- with data visualization skills which one is more important for a product manager uh i'd say both of them are really important and in fact like very handy when you're moving to product management management uh for personally me again as i mentioned i work with a b2b company i think data presentation becomes more important wherein you already talk to the customer directly and you have those key points and you're making sure those present those are presented well to your execs and leadership and your team in general so that uh, they are aligned with the vision uh, but if you're working in a b2c company like if you're working with nike or yelp or uh, someone who's like who has a lot of ma- masses they are catering to then uh, even the data input skill in fact becomes much more important than even the presentation skill because you have a lot of data coming in and it's always easy to make wrong decisions so if you don't have that skill either you're relying on a data analytics expert or uh, uh, you have to build those skills yourself got it okay so the last question uh, if you're building a feature Uh, the question in the chat as well uh, what is the trade off you would give to a kpi friendly feature versus a good to have feature you know sometimes you get too attached you know this will be a good feature and then how do yeah. you you know calm yourself you know just it might not work as yeah, well yeah. as the other one yeah so i think like that's a that's a very good question first of all uh, because uh, as a product manager one of the biggest debate you find yourself struggling with is how do i prioritize one feature over the other um you in fact mentioned like one is good to have versus the other is like has kpis well defined kpis that's actually an easier ask as compared to one with like good kpis both good to have good feeling how do i dec- decide between the two so i think uh, one of the things that my manager told me once was this 80 20 rule uh you have to really think in the way of how do i do 20% of the work that helps 80% of the people do not end up doing 80% work which is only helping 20% people so is my work what is the impact of my work like how do i measure those impact uh, again like what are the kpis but also what are those kpis at scale whatever i'm building is it going how much time of my engineering team is it going to consume and am i going to ship something that really helps cater to a large section of audience really solve their bigger pain points as compared to me slogging my engineering team worse and then like you know just helping one customer really have a very good feature because uh, as a pm you'll also be managing the team and uh, the 
you won't get like unlimited resources. You won't get infinite time of engineering. They won't work after hours for you. You will have to make sure that their work and their time is very well utilized. So always keep that 80-20 in your mind when you're prioritizing the future. So Pareto rule is the golden rule for everything we do in life. <laughs> Looks like it. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thanks, Suti. Um, yeah, Shivi, go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much, Priyanshi, uh, for a wonderful session. I think it uh, answered almost all the questions related to product management one can have. Uh, I just had one uh, another question. Like, um, when I work with product managers, I see that they also get involved in a lot of product architecture. So, do you think that's an essential skill to have, or um, can you work with engineers to figure out how the product architecture or data architecture should look like? Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh... As a P, it, it really depends on which company, which team you're working on to start with. But as a PM, you'll face yourself uh, always struggling with like, hey, should I build a skill, go into depth of that skill, or should I work with someone who is expert at that skill already? So if you do have an expert, always lean on them because you'll have a hundred things to do. And if you just focus on one, uh, you might be building a good architecture, but you're missing out on marketing. You're not talking to your sales team properly or you're not enabling them. So there's so many things to do that always realize like you cannot be stuck with one skill or the other. You always have to rely on other people and uh, find that pain point in the pipeline. So if you feel that the architecture is the missing piece here, we do not have experts or there's something that requires my attention, leave everything and learn about architecture, get in that direction. But if you feel that, hey, this is someone who's already an expert, I can rely on them, focus on the other pain point because again, you won't have unlimited resource or time and, and you have to manage uh, making sure that the product is success. So a product manager is more like a product success manager. You might not be doing a lot of things, but you're like making that roadmap and making sure everyone's like going in that roadmap to direction. Got it. Thank you so much. And the question was like, uh, what's the most challenging part of your role and uh, what's the best thing that you know about product management? Yeah, I think uh, generally uh, decision-making is one of like the, the most difficult part of a product management of product manager's role because uh, you have to say no to a lot of things that you really want to do, the team really wants to do, and sometimes the customer also wants to do. But uh, in fact, starting off with a list on what we're not going to do is important and uh, making sure you have right KPIs because those metrics might not always be evident and uh, making sure that you have heard all the customers and how important that problem is, is important. And uh, saying no becomes one of the key skills. Personally, I used to be a very disorganized person. So the to-do list that I mentioned, the email management that I mentioned was a difficult thing for me to manage and then like get there. But I think I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah, I think everyone gets there eventually. <laughs> Has to get there. Cool. All right, thank you. thank you. I think those were all the questions from our side. Um, again, thank you so much, uh, Priyanshi, for doing this. I think you answered a lot of queries regarding the on how to crack into the PM role or just generally in education, what sort of skill set you, you do and what sort of problems you solve in a SaaS company versus the others. So thank you so much for taking out the time um, to, to do yeah, this. Yeah, no, session. thanks for having me. Um, I'll share the links that I mentioned in the chat and uh, thanks all for having me here. For sure. And for everyone else who's watching this, um, you can drop in a mail to hello at karyanab.com. If you need one-on-one -on -one mentorship, we are ready to partner you up with great mentors such as Priyanshi. Um, and so, yeah, looking forward to, to do that as well. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great thank day. Thank you. Bye.